Welcome to Boating Georgian Bay TV. Tell me about your planned adventure on the loop here. Well, something we've been planning for a number of years. We finally got the boat we wanted, and uh, we've got all the all the details in place. So uh, we've started from Vero Beach this spring and on our way around, and hope to take about a year to complete the complete the whole trip. Okay, and you're originally from Georgian Bay area. You're boaters from Georgian well, Bay area. We're from London, Ontario, and uh, been boating up in Georgian Bay just because, although it's a three-hour drive for us every weekend, we've been doing it for 12 or 14 years because of uh, Bayport Marina up there, which is just fabulous, and Georgian Bay itself. So, really enjoy it. Fantastic. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Pleasure. So Dave, uh, tell me about your loop adventure. Our loop adventure is fabulous. We started in Fort Myers, which is just Florida, which is a little over a thousand miles ago. We are on, now that we leave here, we have no agenda. Go from port to port and whatever turns us on, we're gonna stop and do. And we'll be back in Fort Myers sometime in November, probably. And you're, you told me before, you're California natives that moved to I'm Florida? I'm a California guy that moved to Florida. We owned and operated a marina in California for 45 years. And is this your first time around the loop? This is my first time around the loop. I've done the length of both coasts in boats like this, but never done the loop. Well, thank you for talking to us today. Well, thank you, Mark. What brings you to the uh, American Great Loop Convention? We're planning on doing the loop ourselves in about a year, and we want to get information and inspiration and, and get to know some of the other loopers. And it's been wonderful so far. Yeah, Fantastic. Definitely getting all of that. Where are you folks from? Naples, Florida. Okay, and how long have you been planning? Like, how long have you been thinking about this? Mm, what'd you say, about a year? A year, about year and a half, yeah. Fantastic. And when do you plan to uh, head off? In about a year. In about a year. Okay, right. and right now you're researching boats and uh, getting all set? That's right. Fantastic. You having a good time here? Wonderful. Fabulous. Yeah. The best. So tell me about your loop adventure. Well, so far we started in uh, Tampa Bay, Florida on March 26th and we came down through the Okeechobee Canal and uh, up the East Coast and uh, made it to Norfolk. And what are your plans looking ahead? Uh, we plan to uh, continue the loop. We're going up uh, through the Hudson River, Lake Champlain, up to uh, Montreal and Ottawa and then through the Rideau Canal and up into Trent Severn. And, and on down into Lake Michigan and rivers and hopefully cross our wake around Christmas time. So you're going to do the whole loop inside the year? Yes. Fantastic. What, tell me about your boat a little bit. Uh, it's a 40 foot main ship trawler. It's a 2004. It has uh, twin, twin engines. Um, what else do you want? Oh, just are you enjoying the conference? Oh, and, uh, oh you'd love it. Learning a lot? We're learning a lot, yeah. Cool. Well, and, and enjoy your cruise. Thank you very much. So tell me about your loop adventure. Oh, we had a big adventure. It was wonderful. Yeah. It was, it was absolutely uh, wonderful. Fantastic. Everybody asks us what uh, our favorite park was. We don't have a favorite park. Every park was unique. Some were, some parts were more unique than others, but you know. And you spent some time in Georgian Bay? 
We spent about six weeks did. in Georgian Bay. Right, and what's your impressions of Georgian Bay? Magnificent. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we took the uh, small boat channel. The uh, water was very low. Uh, our boat uh, takes up 47 feet, but we only draw 39 inches. Uh, actually, 42 when we're fully found. And uh, uh, we were fine. Uh, rocks got a little close because the channels got narrow with the low water. And how long did you spend doing the entire loop? Uh, we spent uh, three, 300 days and uh, traveled 100 days. Fantastic. But now you're goal loopers. And now we we're goal loopers. Are. are you going to do it again? See this? We're going to do some parts of it again. Are you? Yes. And where, where's your boat kept now? At home in Charleston. In Charleston. Charleston. That's yeah. home base, home port, I should say. Yeah. And it was lovely. And as I'm sure you've heard in the past couple of days, the geographical settings that we approached each time and we enjoyed and embraced throughout the trip was wonderful, but without a doubt the highlight was meeting the wonderful people. The graciousness and the camaraderie was absolutely terrific. Well, thank you for it taking the time to talk to us today on both that. Sure. Yeah. Thank and you. Where, where are you off to next? Uh, we don't know. We're here by car this time. Okay. Uh, but. Um, We've been doing a weekend trips since we got back. We got back February the 10th. We're doing weekend trips, and uh, we were just uh, asked today if we wanted to uh, accompany some other folks uh, up to Cape Lookout. Right. Uh, uh, by Cape Fear. Well, we're keeping our options open to a variety of uh, things. That we have considered parts of Canada. Um, particularly, so we're going yeah, to are two, two projects I'm, I'm looking into. Uh, the one that I know very little about is the Down East Loop uh, that is going out the St. Lawrence River and uh, back home uh, through the Canadian Maritimes and New England. And uh, the other project I know something about is the uh, uh, Canadian Triangle Loop. Fantastic. Well, happy cruising. Thank, Thank you very much. for a long time, probably 10 years, and uh, uh, kind of talked Deborah into it in the last couple of years, and we've uh, we started April the 4th. And where, where are you heading to? Uh, for the headed, summer? Uh, I'm sorry? For this summer, where are you For the summer, to? we're headed to Georgian Bay, and uh, we're going to do the Trent Severn, Georgian Bay, North Passage, and hope to kind of spend most of our time in Canada this summer. Fantastic. Are you going to complete the loop in a year, or are you going to take yes. more than a year? We're, we're planning to uh, do it in a year, but uh, we also understand in boating, it, you know, your plans change sometimes, so we're going to try to be flexible. Good. And you join the conference? Absolutely. Very much so. Well, listen, thanks for talking to us today. Okay. Thank you. We're here at Crates Lake Country today with uh, Dan Crate. Dan, uh, tell me a bit about uh, how uh, Crates got started here. Well, Mark, my family came up to Aurelia in uh, the early 70s and started a, a big marina, 250 slips, uh, over on McPhee Bay here in the northeast corner of Lake Simcoe. Uh, we were there until the mid-90s, and then uh, my dad and my brother and I started this venture here in the Athlete Narrows in 2004. So we've been here for almost uh, nine years, and uh, we're a new Regal and Pursuit dealer and also sell quality uh, pre owned brokerage. Dan, what about uh, for a seller doing a boat survey? Does it make sense for the seller to do a survey so he knows what he's getting into, you know, when the boat's uh, getting sold, or or is it best just to wait and, and have you guys 
look it over or have a professional surveyor come in and do it for the buyer? Yeah, great question, Mark. I, I would say, without a question of a doubt, a, a pre-sale survey is worth the investment on the part of the vendor. In a brokerage situation where the boat is privately owned and the vendor wants to put the boat on the market, um, doing a preemptive survey is going to tell you so much more about the boat. And also, when the time comes uh, for an offer to come in on the boat and you're negotiating a sale, if that survey is done in advance, what it will allow you to do is move the process along much quicker as opposed to wait. Uh, because in season, April to October, sometimes the surveyors are booked up for over a month. Um, it's a good, uh, it's a good piece of, uh, or it's a good thing to do uh, to prepare the boat in advance, and it will help the sale come through quicker, and also identify any issues in the boat that you may not have even known about. And what's the uh, current demand for good used boats? It's uh, really strong right now, Mark. It's. Uh, we're seeing with uh, a lot of people training up to new boats, new bigger boats, that there's a good supply of smaller, late model quality boats out there and uh, the demand's really strong. How do you steer a new boat customer in the right direction in terms of what boat to buy? Yeah, Mark, I think the, probably the number one thing uh, when working with a new boat buyer is listening to what is important to the customer. Um, a lot of salespeople sometimes will talk about, a lot about what they have and what's important about, what's special about their boats that they have in stock. The number one thing that uh, we need to do is listen to the customer's needs and make sure we identify with them. And not only that, but be patient with them to make sure as we go through the models that are available, we find what's important, not only in the boat that we have, but how it relates to the customer. Sometimes that process can uh, take up to a couple of years selecting the right boat. We have some customers who come through the door and literally find the boat that suits their needs within an hour. But uh, the number one thing is to listen and be patient and work with the customer. Uh, moisture penetration on a boat that's coming in uh, as a trade where it's got into the balsa core, is that a showstopper in terms of trading a boat? Uh, not necessarily, Mark. Um, a lot of used boats out there uh, have moisture penetration in, in the coring material. Uh, it's most common in the decks where you've got a lot, of, uh, pardon me, a lot of UV exposure and the silicone breaks down on uh, deck fittings. And uh, it, as long as that moisture penetration is it, uh, isn't extensive to the point where it started to uh, rot out the coring material, it, it's not a big issue, no. Uh, where it can be a showstopper to answer your question is when you have uh, structural components like stringers and bulkheads or maybe even bottom coring material that has extensive moisture penetration where that coring material has started to rot and it's affected the structural integrity and the safety of the vessel, that's where it is an issue that needs to be dealt with. And uh, that can have an effect on the, uh, the value of the vessel, but uh, even then it still may be a uh, trade-off, if you will, as long as someone deals with it. Wholeness, a wholeness yoga on the docks, and we're here to talk about boat yoga today. So, Gail, how did you get started in yoga? Well, I got started in yoga because uh, I was very sore. I had a lot of back issues, and I was suffering a lot with uh, other things in my life. And uh, um, your business itself, like. Basically, people come and they get lessons and they do it mostly for relaxation or they do it for stress or what, uh, what's the primary purpose? Well, everybody comes to it for a different reason. Some people are coming because it's very helpful at reducing stress. Some people are coming because uh, they are working on increasing their flexibility. And some people are very flexible and are working on being strong, increasing their strengths. So depends on what they're trying to get out of it, but the bottom line is it helps to reduce stress. Um, it um, is good for the, the nervous system, good for the emotions, and just helps to bring balance into your life. So a lot of people, you know, they hear yoga and they're not too sure about it type thing, but the bottom line is, is it, it does have direct health benefits, right? It definitely has uh, direct health benefits. I mean, it's been proven to uh, lower heart rate, so and reduce uh, blood pressure. People with arthritis benefit from it. People with osteoporosis benefit from it. Uh, they're really, if you are suffering in any way with any, you know, pain.
pain, chronic pain, acute pain, then it's very beneficial. Uh, why would you want to do boat, boat yoga? Uh, I think one really good reason for wanting to do boat yoga would be there's, uh, you know, there's not, not a lot of space on a boat, so you're not getting a lot of physical activity. And the one great thing about yoga is you don't need a lot of space, but you can get maximum benefit from, you know, the postures in yoga. Good. So when you're cruising and you've, you know, you've been at the helm all day, you know, all the ideas, you know, you get onto the dock or whatever, you get out your anchorage and, uh, you know, you can kind of relax and kind of stretch out, get the muscles stretched out and feel a lot better. Is that the idea? Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, you can bring, uh, if you've been staying in, in one position for a long time, your body, your body doesn't like that. Your body likes to move. And the postures in, in yoga let you move your body in really beneficial ways, you know, at opening up your joints and, and getting all the fluids in your body moving. So without, you know, needing a lot of space, you, you get a lot of benefit. Right. Now, if you don't have a yoga mat, can you still do yoga without a yoga mat or, or is there a safety issue there? Uh, you can do yoga anywhere. You know, you don't need anything other than your own body to do yoga. And you can do yoga sitting in a chair. You can do yoga when you're laying in your bed. So yoga is, is, uh, yoga is more of a state of mind than, than an, uh, a physical action. So Gail, is this enough space in the cockpit of this boat to, this is a 36 foot boat, is this enough space in the cockpit of the boat to do yoga? There is more than enough space in this boat to do yoga and more than one person could do yoga in this space. Okay, so what if you don't want to get down on the deck and all that if the deck's dirty or you just don't want to get down on the deck and can you still do yoga without you know being on the ground, being on the floor type thing? Yes, I, I like just only being in this boat for a few moments, I see a couple of really uh, wonderful opportunities to get some great stretching in. One is taking advantage of bars like this, if you have something in your uh, boat where you can hold on to, and just simply holding on, stepping yourself back as far as you can, and then dropping that head down between your arms. You want to feel like your tailbone is reaching back. And you want to feel like you're lengthening through the crown of the head. Really nice back opening, hamstring lengthening. Nice, and then you can reverse it, even dropping the hips forward and lifting up the chest to start to open up into a cobra-like posture. Uh, balance is another thing that, uh, one of the big benefits that you get from yoga. And balance as we age, we start to lose our, our ability to balance, but we can regain it very quickly. And having, you know, bars like this, you can start with a nice simple balance, just lifting up one leg and really focusing on standing up tall, lifting up the rib cage, lengthening the spine, adding an arm reaching up is adding that stretch even a little bit more. You can start to go into a little bit more challenging uh, balance by bringing and extending the leg out or coming behind with that leg to start to open up the front of the body. So Gail, uh, kind of give us a summary, like what, what if, you know, what if you feel kind of self-conscious about doing yoga? Well, I don't really think there's a, a reason why you should feel self-conscious. I mean, so many people are, are practicing yoga now. I mean, there was a time where, you know, it was rare to see, but, you know, it's on television now. You see it in, in gyms, you see it in daycares. It's all over the place now. It's being introduced into the schools. 
So it's definitely becoming very mainstream. Yes, and I know down in, uh, you know, the big yachting centers like Yacht Lauderdale and Miami, uh, you know, certainly any of the big, there's, there's companies that come around two boats and do private yoga lessons and yoga training uh, commonplace now in, in, in most uh, big marinas. Well, I can see that because, you know, especially when you're looking at the limited space that you have on a boat and you don't want to bring a lot of equipment, with yoga, all you need is your body, very limited space, no equipment, and you get an amazing workout. Yeah, and people are getting older, kind of losing their mobility, and, uh, you know, if they're boaters and they're cruising, uh, you know, they need some way to limber up. They just don't get it any other way, right? They don't, and, you know, what's amazing is we took a look at, at, at your boat and we found tiny little spaces. Uh, we were able to modify things so that anybody could get a nice uh, stretch, could open up their joints, and especially as we age, we tend to, our joints tend to become inflamed and we need to keep them moving. So, you know, finding a place where you can sit and, and do a spinal twist or a forward bend is really beneficial. And it's gonna make a world of difference in the way you feel, the energy level that you feel. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we learned a lot about yoga, appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure coming here. We're here in the beautiful Bayport Marina with Captain Bill Everett of Cosmos Yacht Charters. Bill, uh, tell me a little bit about your business here. Uh, yeah, we started this uh, business back in 2006 and, uh, and the reason that we wanted to be located here is that we're at the south with a huge population base from which we can draw clients and, uh, and we've been operating uh, and we chose this marina as well because it's a deep water marina, the service is fantastic and it's easy for people to find us. Bill, I understand you offer both uh, captain and bareboat charters, what's, th what's the difference there? Uh, yes, we, we started off with just the crew charters or captain charters, some people call it skipper charters, uh, where we provide the, the yacht and, a, and a, a captain that goes with the boat. Uh, and the bareboat charters, which we've introduced last year, is for qualified people that are able to take the boat out on their own. We have a, a 34 foot sailboat that is in the, our bareboat program and we have a, a marine trader, a 38 foot trawler coming into the program uh, next month in July that will also go out uh, on a bareboat basis where, for qualified people who uh, are able to handle the boat and know how to navigate. Bill, Cruising World named uh, Georgian Bay as one of the top 10 cruising destinations in the world. How does it compare to some of the places that you've been over the years? Oh, I would say definitely. I can see why they'd have such a rating. In fact, I often say to people it's, it's top best freshwater sailing in the world, both Georgia Bay and the North Channel. The scenery is just uh, uh, incredible. The, the rugged, ruggedness of the shoreline and all of the islands. And as a matter of fact, uh, the 30,000 Islands is a UNESCO designation as a world biosphere. And one of the criteria for that designation is that the the uh, area is being pres preserved in its natural beauty. There is tons of wildlife. There's good fishing. Uh, the winds are wonderful uh, in the in the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, and the same uh, goes for the North Channel. It's the topography is a little different, but it's uh, it, and it compares extremely well with uh, I've been sailing. I've sailed the Chesapeake, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico. Uh, the Virgin Islands and South Florida and I'd say that during the summer here it, it, it compares very well with any of these other uh, areas that I've sailed. Well, uh, what kind of activities do people do when they're out on the charter? Uh, there's all sorts of things. Uh, well I guess one of the favorites is uh, people love to swim uh, when the water gets warm enough. We're almost there now in mid-June. Uh, a lot of the places we go there's beautiful sandy beaches. They also uh, can swim off the back of the boat. There's an integrated uh, swim ladder that's an all-time favorite. People like to jump off the arch and, and swim. We carry some uh, fishing gear with us, so the children, it's usually big with the children, they like to fish off the boat and they do catch fish. We also keep uh, floating noodles on board for people to, uh, you know, just kind of play around in the water. Another favorite would be the, the uh, taking the dinghy out. We have an outboard uh, motor on the dinghy and we let the guests uh, take the dinghy out and do some exploring along the shoreline or take the boat to go to shore. We shuttle them ashore uh, as well if they prefer that. And then there's the hiking on, on land. In many of the places we go, there's some beautiful scenery and uh, some uh, great hiking, which uh, people do tend to uh, enjoy. Bill, this particular boat we're on, uh, tell, what is it? It's a, uh, it's a Hunter 410. It's a 41-foot uh, sloop-rigged uh, sailboat. 
Okay. What how, what's it comfortable for? How many people would would you take out on a charter on this boat? Uh, if they're staying overnight, we've got three guest cabins, so we can take six uh, comfortably take six uh, six guests on board. And there's two heads, or better known as washrooms, uh, for our guests. Uh, Bill, what are some of your favorite uh, destinations on the bay? Oh gosh, that's a tough question. There's just so many different places I, uh, that I really enjoy and that our clients enjoy. I'd say locally here at the south end of Georgian Bay, we've got the Georgian Bay Islands National Park. It's one of Canada's 44 national parks with a group, a large group of islands. Uh, Beausoleil Island being the largest one and the most favorite by our guests. It's got uh, sand, natural sandy beaches, beautiful hiking, and wonderful anchorages all around the island uh, for protection from the weather. Uh, when, uh, when swinging on anchor overnight. Uh, another favorite of mine uh, and our guests is the, the Bruce Peninsula uh, National Park. Again, another national park on Georgian Bay. Uh, and we, the um, favorite over there would be with the Wingfield Basin at the Cabot Head. It's a natural protected cove with incredibly beautiful limestone cliffs. Uh, we take clients also to the grotto, the sea caves that are located on the north shore of the Bruce Peninsula. Uh, to Flower Pot Island, to Cove Island, and of course the town of Tobamori is, uh, is where we uh, pick up guests and, and, and uh, bring them back at the end of their cruise. Typically a cruise like that is a, is a week long.